unleash the power of knowledge and connect with the heartbeat of the African diaspora. Download our African Diaspora News Channel app now on Google Play and Apple App Store. Stay informed with authentic and diverse perspectives, breaking news and cultural insights. Immerse yourself in a community that celebrates unity, resilience and progress. Experience the vibrancy of the diaspora at your fingertips. Don't miss out. Empower your perspective today. Search African Diaspora News Channel and join the conversation. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you for joining us on the stream today. Um, it always oh, say Mississippi in the building. Shout out to Mississippi, man. Shout out to all my good brothers and sisters in Mississippi. You know, it's, it's y'all, y'all, man, you know, most of the people I've met from Mississippi has been some good down to earth black people. I'm telling you that, man. I'm always work with a brother from Mississippi. Shout out to big Mike. If you're watching and, and his family, um, just, just, just good old, good old country, Mississippi people. Shout out to y'all. Um, of course, tonight we're going to be looking at, you know, uh, a particular video tonight. And we'll be seeing, you know, where we're going. Now, when it comes to these streams, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know where I'm going to go with them. I don't script them. I kind of go off of just where I'm feeling. So that's just kind of how I do these streams. It, go, it can go either way. It could turn, but I like the freedom of that. Let me share this real quick uh, that we are on live. So give me a second. Um, before I get to any of that, let me, let me say something. Um, I started going to the African continent 2018. You know the story. I had no thought process of nothing going to no African continent whatsoever. Um, you know, I'm just here doing what I do. And, you know, I was invited. I ended up going. And um, it's, it was great. Great experience. And I received nothing but love while I was there in Ethiopia. Uh, so much so that I'm like, man, you know, we need to uh, see about, we can bring people together, you know? I mean, because, man, it, it's, it's, it's much bigger than just what, what's going on here in America. So that was why I made a complete switch up on just content strategy and, and our mission of what we're doing here. And I know we've always had immigrants in America from the, you know, the African continent, Caribbean, et cetera. Um, but all these years, I've never seen some of the things I've seen today. Now, I want to make sure I, I say this with, with balance and reality. I work with continental Africans every day. I talk to continental Africans all the time. Um, we, we work together. We do meetings. We, I'm going to be in a continent later in the week. So I'm always working with continental Africans and I can tell you on a continent that I don't, I've never had, never heard some of this stuff we is hearing now. I've never experienced some of this anti-black American sentiment, you know, so I'm in my mind, you know, I'm kind of figuring out maybe where some of it's coming from, but I explain that a little later, but trust me, cause, cause what happens with the internet, you got to be careful with the internet. A person will see a video and then they will say, okay, this is a representation of all these people. So now I'm going to go after all these group of people, right? And put everybody in the same box. I got brothers and sisters from the continent writing me, asking me, Phil, what's going on with them? Like, hey, they embarrassing us over here. We're not even, I don't know what they got going on. So I get those kind of emails from brothers and sisters from the continent or from the Caribbean, any place, and they feel embarrassed about what they see going on here and they say, Hey man, this is, we didn't send them over here. I don't know what they own. So because I get those emails and because I have been to the continent and dealt with brothers and sisters, I, then I'm like, okay, I know that this is not a representation of all. And even immigrants here, I know that's not a representation of all. So let's not get into, if we see it, that's view all right. Say it with balance. But if we see it, we address it. And this is a unity conversation we're having today, right? Unity. Let me explain to you why it's a unity conversation, even when it comes to some checking, right? To make sure you get people in line with disrespect. The reason why you got to do that, if you have a bunch of good people over here, and then you got 
some negative people, some bad people here. Those people will ruin all the good that these people are doing over here. Those people will cause fights, dissensions, everything with the people that's trying to do some work. So we got to identify the problem child or the problem children, get them out the way by saying, we see who you are. We know what you're doing. It's not going to be tolerated. Take that somewhere else. And understand that if you come here with this, it's going to be extremely hostile toward you for trying to mess up the good things that we all are trying to do here in, in, in the community, right? And then once they get that pushback and they say, okay, I'm going to fall back and get it, stay in my place. So this is why we're doing it. This is, you know, because some people say, well, Phil, y'all pointing this out, that's not bringing people together. Well, what they're doing is not bringing people together. That's tearing people apart. So a person in my position has to say, no, I can't sit up here and watch people try to tear others apart. We have to deal with those people so we can keep the unity going. Right? Right. All right. Now, um, let's get to the devotional. Okay. Let me see what Missy says here. Americans are causing the body has been one sided. Our hands and slapped. So, you know, it's a two sided thing on a continent. Nothing but love. Like I say, I work with Africans every day from several countries. I work with, I work with people from Ghana, Nigeria, Ethiopia, Kenya, South Africa, many African countries from East, West, South, no issues, no problems. We work very well. Right. Um, but some people over here, they own one. And I told y'all the U S embassy selects people to come here. Do you really think they're going to select the people that think like Julius Malema or professor Lumumba? Do you really think they're going to bring those Africans over here? No, they're going to bring the Candace Owens's of the world. They're going to bring, uh, the, the sheriff Clark's of the world, that mindset. They're going to bring the Jesse Lee Peterson mindset from the continent. And that's what we have gotten. Of course, not all of that way, not all because I have plenty of brothers and sisters in a diaspora who have immigrated to this country. I meet them on the street all the time and they don't think that way. They love what we do. They want, they want to work together with black America to say, Hey, we all in the same country. We got to figure this thing out. So for the sake of those people that I meet on the street, I can't put this on all and I'm not going to let nobody put it on all, but we're going to address the people that's doing it. Okay. So real quick, uh, devotional, you gotta do our devotional. Um, what would y'all like real quick? Um, would you like the Eric Mays devotional or you like the super mayor devotional? You let me know real quick. Um, so we can get the devotional going and, um, real quick. Let me know Eric Mays or super mayor devotional. I'm waiting on y'all. Who going to be the first? Yeah. Yeah. That guy. Yeah. I got you. You say in the, you in the UK, London, you have the same uh, problem. You say it as, okay. All right. So Chris is saying Eric Mays devotional. Everybody's saying the Eric Mays devotional. One say super mayor. Look like so far. Um, you looking for the Eric Mays devotional. Okay. That's the devotion y'all selected for the day. We'll make sure to uh, get up that devotional. Here we go. I'm just telling you, I'm going to let you talk. Who you talking to, you going to let? The voters let me. I got voted in. Who you talking to? You going to let me? I got seconds left. I want you to know. Ain't she crazy? How many seconds? Why are you? I'm counting your time. Miss Galloway, I'm going to rule you out order. You keep talking so much. Do I have the floor? Do I? Yes, do you I? do. You have the floor. Thank you very much. What a fool. We have got to help the city of Flint. We have got to move the city forward. We have got to vote yes on this. Thank you. Ms. Herkenroda, you the reason that I'm going to vote the way I'm going to vote because you tried to put words in my mouth like I said you was a racist. You got to stop doing that. You got to stop doing that. Ms. Fields, please be very careful in that area. Please. 
All he I said, it. there was mediation in you the You told details of who in what room and how many But and I what. am going to finish saying this. Oh, well, go ahead. That's fine. Do you? It shouldn't be fine. We got folks sitting in business and I wouldn't care if you was the chair, the sofa, the TV. Point of information, Madam Chair. What's your point? Are you going to sit and allow this man to talk all that tough talk talking about what, what he ain't scared, won't, and, uh, 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 and you sit there and condone it? May I be? All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the great and dearly departed Eric Mays for your devotional uh, for today. And if you are enjoying the show, put put a little bit on the uh, uh, super chat. That'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, even better if you go ahead and download the app and get a membership there. So I seen, um, a comment earlier. Every time we want to address these topics that's coming at us, like, think about it. Most black Americans aren't really talking about anybody outside of what we got going on unless they come say something to us or something disrespectful. I've never been around any group of black Americans. Definitely. I'm from the South talking about any person in the diaspora in a negative way. Now I've just never heard it. Now people in New York, the East coast, they say, Oh, well, when I was growing up, they would tease me about my food. They'll tease me about, they'll call me African booty scratch. They'll do this. They'll do that. And they still talking about that from kids stuff. And I, when I tell them, but they call me African booty scratcher too. And I'm not from the continent. I'm not from the Caribbean. I'm not from any of that. What do you say to that when they call me that? That was just something they did back in the day. And remember where it comes from, it comes from uh, National Geographic, which is a white owned uh, uh, company, white people went to the African continent in the rural areas where not in the city, but in the rural areas and filming people while they're getting bit by mosquitoes and stuff like that. If you are walking around in your traditional garb and you know, you don't have certain things on to protect you from mosquitoes. Yes. And mosquitoes will bite you on the butt. I've been bitten. I live in, in, in down here in Texas. I come originally from Port Arthur. I've had many mosquitoes bite me through my clothes. That's how bad the mosquitoes are in Port Arthur. Okay. And I've been bit on my butt before by a mosquito. So yeah, you gonna scratch it. Okay, it's not the end of the world. It is what it is, right? But let's, but that's back in the day. People, the kids don't even say that today. They don't even say that. So I don't know why that's brought up. Well, let's play this video. Cause this video is, is quite, it's, 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 it's a little disturbing a little bit, but let's, let's go ahead and, and cue this up real quick. The ethnic group I hate the most is our black Americans. I hate them the most. If you make a list of like the best black people, a lot of them are African Americans. Yeah. But if you make a list of the worst, worst. black people, the worst <laughs> American American American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. they hold us back and bring us forward. <laughs> like, Literally. Like, ten steps forward, ten steps. They got they got Martin Luther King, yeah. but then they got Sexy Red. I remember. I mean, it's not just black Americans. It's just Americans in general are just stupid. Now, if there was like a country that wasn't on earth though. America. It'd be America. Like, yeah, I, I honestly believe that people, when you go to America, you leave the planet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, they will be surprised that like flipping they're Russia, surprised there's black people like, here. Russia and Germany are not next to each other. They're yeah. like, <laughs> in Europe is just one road. Literally, Imagine, I'm in Europe, like, oh yeah, I got a cousin in Europe. Where is he from? Like, He's from London, bro. Like, <laughs> like, we're not in the same That's Europe. That's what I'm saying, but they're like, yeah, man, I'm coming to Europe, man. Let's meet. Yeah, 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 Let's link up. Man, I'm going, I'm coming to Europe, man. They arrive, they call me. Where are you, man? I'm like, yo, bro, I'm in Manchester. Where are you? Yeah, man, I'm in Sweden right now. <laughs> Over there, yeah, like, they're convinced that whatever's happening there. That's right. Like, that's it. That's what's meant to be. They don't know life outside of America. Okay. All right. So now you heard everything and now I'm going to just kind of play it a little bit and stop it in certain parts. When I first heard that, like, huh? I, I like what? While they're using European British accents talking that way, they're not in their homeland. They in Europe talking. Okay. Let, let's start it over. Let's go. That's the group I hate the most is our black Americans. I hate them the most. If you make Let's stop right there. He said the one ethnic group that he hates the most is black Americans. Let's talk about that. Why do you hate black Americans so much? Like, like, listen, the term hate is a very strong term. Why? What do we do to you? 
Last time I checked, let me let me run down a little. Let me, hold on, get my get my ink pen here. Uh, 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 from uh, shout out to Costa Rica. Last time I checked, Black Americans, we didn't colonize nobody in our planet Earth. Okay, check. We didn't steal your artifacts from your countries and put it in our black American museums over the Europeans did. So we didn't do that. Check. When you want your artifacts back, those same Europeans tell you, well, we'll loan you your stuff. We'll loan it to you. And, and, and if you agree to, to we'll loan you your stuff, give it back to us. So we can put it back in our museums. You don't have no hatred for the people who got your stuff. You have no hatred for the people who colonized you, but you got hatred for black Americans. And if you really want to go there, cause I have to, cause this is history. Do you hate black Americans because you descend from tribes who possibly sold your brethren into slavery and those you sold into possible slavery actually is in a better position than you today. Is it could be that? Cause think about it to use the term hate. That's a very strong word. That's a, that's a passionate word. When you say you hate somebody, think about that. And his cohorts is agreeing with him. So let, let's continue. You're talking about you hate black Americans. Okay, fine. Black Americans in 2024, we are not going to your countries and robbing you of your resources. You have trillions of dollars of resources right now underneath your feet. And yet everybody in their mama who's not black Americans come in, take your resources. Maybe China build you an airport, maybe some roads or whatever the case may be. They may give you a little bit more than the folks did, you know, for getting your resources, but everybody can get your resources and make trillions off of it. The same European countries that you're sitting in right now, you're talking about you got uh, uh, cousins or whatever in Luxembourg and, and, and you're talking about all these different places, you're big enough Europe, right? Those European countries wouldn't be to where they at without stealing your resources, but you'd rather sit up in their countries with stolen resources that come from your homeland, but you have hatred for black Americans who never took a thing from you. Bro, like, 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 like Jocelyn Hernandez says, can I live? Man, like, for real, like, why, why all the anti-black American sentiment? We aren't in control of your leaders. Your leaders there are people that come from your particular ethnic groups, right? They do you wrong, so wrong that you say is you have to leave your homeland and go to Europe because more y'all go to Europe than y'all come to the United States. You, a lot of you are flooding Europe. Europe saying they in a migration crisis and it serves them right because you take people resources and you living off of it. Well, the people come and get their resources back. I'm not tripping on it, but you're not upset with those Europeans. You're not upset with the European union. You upset with black America. I mean, y'all, does that really make sense? Does it really make sense? It's like, just like on the screen, no one could justify anti-black American sentiment on collective harm. We have not collectively harmed no group of people. Let's run them down. The folks, we haven't collectively harmed them. If it wasn't been for us, they wouldn't be where they at today. Let's call it what it is. Before they met us, they were living in squalor in, in Europe. They couldn't get nothing going on until they got around us. Let's call it what it is. If you look at the Middle Eastern Arab countries, 
We haven't done nothing to them. If anybody, anybody that maybe Africans should have a hate toward, why don't you have a hatred toward them Arabs who had you in slavery first? The Arabs had you in slavery first. The, the white man got the game from the Arab and he, once he learned the game, he turned into a, a way to colonize the world. I mean, he was just better at it. That's called it what it is than the Arab was. We didn't do nothing to the Arabs as a collective group of people. We haven't done nothing to no Asian countries as a collective group of people. None. We haven't done nothing to East Indians. We haven't done nothing to no one in Latin America. We haven't done nothing to no one in the Caribbean. We haven't done anything to nobody. They can point out and say, you stole our resources, black Americans. You did this to our women. You did this to our men. Nobody could point that out. But, but what is a sign that you are God's people? They will hate you without a cause. But remember, they hated me first. There's no other group of people on the planet earth that's hated like black America's hated for no reason. I don't see no other group of people that's hated like we are, and we haven't done nothing to nobody. Every time we get by ourselves, here come the world following behind us. They say they don't want us around them. It don't matter where people come from. It don't matter. We, they say, we don't like y'all, y'all problems, y'all trouble, y'all criminals, y'all thieves, y'all, it, it, but yet facts don't bear that out. Yeah, we say, okay, fine, no problem. We're a problem, we're gonna get our bags, we're going to go over here. We're going to stay over here. You stay over there. When black America do that, everyone says black Americans are wrong. So you don't want us around, but when we get away from you, you're mad that we got away from you, right? We want to unify with you. Some of you, right? Some of you that, that, that came here, you say, Nope, I'm not black American. I'm not, I, you black, I'm this. You know, hey, I, I'm, I'm everything else but black. I don't even want to live in black communities. Okay, fine. No problem. We're going to just be cool with that. We're going to go over here. You black Americans are divisive. What? You won't even live in black American communities. You don't go to the black American churches. You don't do nothing with black Americans. But when black Americans say, okay, cool, we're going to just do, do our thing over here. Now black Americans are the bit black Americans can't win for losing guys. We can't in America for sure. We can't win for losing. Everybody can say they don't want us around. When we say cool, we're going to go do our own thing elsewhere. We're going to mind our own business. We're not going to dip our finger in nobody's water. We're going to leave it alone. Now we're divisive. Bro, am I, am I, are we living in the twilight zone? Like, is it just me that, that that's realizing this? And when I met in life, I unify with those that want to unify with me. That's period. No matter where you are from, if you unify with me, I'm cool. I will unify with you. I don't look at where people from and all of that. Long as you in the same spirit as me, the same tribe as me, you, my brother, you, my sister, that's it. If you're not on that, then I'm fool with you. But it's not just some of them. And the, but let me get back to them, and I'll talk about others here for a minute. So let me cue this back up. Let's cue this back up. List of like the best black people. A lot of them African Americans. Yeah. But if you make a list of the worst, worst. black people, the worst <laughs> American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. they hold us back and bring us forward. <laughs> like, Literally. Like ten steps forward. Ten. Let's stop right there. That was a, That was an interesting statement that he just said. Right there. He said they hold us back. You're in, you're in Europe, sir. It sounds like you're in the UK. You got a whole British accent. How black Americans are holding you in particular back? The majority of black Americans have no desire to be in Britain. I'm one of them. I don't really have a desire. If you see me in Britain, you better believe it's on some business with African diaspora. 
Other than that, for me talking about, hey, I'm going to take my wife and kids to Britain. No, no, I'm cool. I, I said, I need to see all the black nations first before I even think about that. I, I'm cool. If I want to go see Britain, I'll just go to Maine. If I want to see Britain. But how are we holding y'all back? Like, what superpower do we have where we, we can just move our fingers and, and no matter what we do, we're holding them back? Sir, are you saying that we're your leader? Is that what you're saying? I'm going to say it. I'm going to piss some people off. I've said this, and I kind of rub people wrong for you when I said this. We didn't put ourselves in that position. But clearly, black America has been the global leader and the global voice of the diaspora. Some people don't like when you say that, but let's call it what it is. Because we have been put in that position, not can we ask for it. We didn't ask for that position, but because of our fight, because of our collective struggle, because we are the only group that's not trying to assimilate in the white supremacy. We the only group saying no to that. We the only group that's truly holding up the banner for the whole black world. There are people who don't like us for that. Not just the anti-black uh, racist, but also some, some in the diaspora don't like us for that reason too. Why them and not me? Well, when you put in the work, it'll be you. When you're willing to go through the beatings, when you really go through the dogs and the water hoses, when you're willing to go through the 17 bullets in the back, when you're willing to go through the jail sentences, when you're willing to go through the, uh, being on trees, when you're willing to go deal with all that, then it's you. You are mad at our, at what we went through basically. We didn't get to this position overnight. We would still be on the plantation right now if we didn't fight back. Don't let this sanitized history that they try to teach you like, oh, Abraham Lincoln was so benevolent and the Civil War helped free the slaves. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Prior to the Civil War, it was two issues that was going on. The South was definitely making way more money because of slavery. You had a lot of slave revolts. Okay, going on at that time, constant slave revolts going on. They felt the union was going to bust up because they say, hey, we're making way more money. They want to expand with Westward. And they had slavery, they could have did it, right? But they still would have had more problems with the slaves. They, there was not brothers and sisters always just saying, oh, we're going to just, oh, we're working 18, 20 years a slave. No, 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 no. The North didn't even win the Civil War until black people joined it. The Confederates was whipping their butt until black people got in the Union Army and, and won that. So if you want to say who freed the slaves, it was black Americans. That's who freed the slaves. We got a Memorial Day. Why? Because we said, hey, we want to honor all the soldiers in the Civil War that participated in helping you know, us with this mission. That's how we got Memorial Day. You mentioned Martin Luther King. Yes, we, in our lineage, we have produced a Martin Luther King. We have produced a Malcolm X. And you want to talk about a sexy red? A sexy red is a symptom of what happened after the breakdown of the black family that was constantly fought by who? The white supremacists. When you look at black people when we left alone in our history, we don't produce that a sexy red and sexy red is thoroughly owned and controlled by record labels. That's not look like us. Clearly sexy red isn't our leader. Trust me, sexy red gonna come and go. There's been many sexy reds that's came and gone. Trust me. You probably, you will not be talking about sexy red in the next 10, 20 years. But you be talking about Martin Luther King. You be talking about Malcolm X. You be talking about the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. But it's interesting to say that we hold them back. We don't hold you back because if you actually follow our lead, you would actually, you would actually fall, leave Europe, return back to your homeland, and fight and get your homeland free of all those colonizers. You will fight against your government and get all those sellouts out 
and then you would run your nation as a black utopia if we were truly your leaders. We don't hold you back. You hold yourself back, sir. Because how many times black Americans say, look, if we had our own nation and we were left alone in our own nation, do our own thing, watch what we could produce. We've done it right here in America under oppression. Could you imagine what we would do if we didn't have no oppression? Nobody in the way? Please. Let, let's continue. They got, they got Martin Luther King, yeah. but then they got Sexy Red. I remember I mean, it's not just black Americans, it's just Americans in general are just stupid. Now, if there was like a country that wasn't on Earth, bro, America. it would be America. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly believe that people, when you go to America, you leave the planet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like, they'll be surprised that like flipping they're Russia, surprised there's black people. Now like Russia and Germany are not next to each other. They're like, <laughs> in Europe, just one road. Literally, Imagine, I'm in Europe. Like, oh, yeah, I got a cousin in Europe. Where is he from? Like, from they're, they're, they're like, <laughs> we're not in the same that's Europe. That's what I'm saying. But they're like, yeah, man, I'm coming to Europe, man. Let's meet. Like, yeah, yeah, Let's link up. Man, I'm going. I'm coming to Europe, man. They arrive. They call me. Where are you, man? I'm like, yo, bro, I'm in Manchester. Where are you? Yeah, man, I'm in Sweden right now. <laughs> Over there, yeah, like, they're convinced that whatever's happening there, that's right. like, that's it. That's what's meant to they be. They don't know life outside of America. <laughs> Man, I just, I just can't relate to, to that claiming, claiming another country like that, bruh. Like, you know how many times I'll be like, man, you know, sometimes I, I, I just don't get it. I don't, I don't get it. Like, y'all got countries full of black people, you the majority, and yet I've sat here and I've watched how the folks who come in your country, do whatever they want to do in your country, and... Some, some are just straight bowing down and all kind of other things. Then you're so excited about being in Europe, excited about it. Oh, well, you know, Americans in general. Why you don't like Americans in general? Remember, you said that we act like we in our own planet, in our own world, not worry about nobody else. There was a video I saw on TikTok, and it was a good video. It was this white guy from Britain, and he talked about how in America, he understood why most Americans don't have to travel out of America too much to have different experiences that they would have across the way in the other side of the world. He was saying that like, as, as, a, as a British guy, when he started traveling all the 50 states, he said it's almost like being in 50 different countries. He said each, each state has its own governor, has its own constitution, they have their own laws, and each one is different to each one of them. He said, sure, it's a federal government, he said, but some of the same, he said, the flights that you would do, he mentioned maybe from Britain to France or the different countries or whatever. He said, some of them flights is like doing that to certain states in this country. He said, anything that you really want to do, he said, you can really do it in America. You really don't have to leave America if you don't want. That was a British guy that said that, right? Also, a lot of Americans don't travel for a whole lot of reasons. Um, number, I'll say two, um, the American economy keep Americans so bogged down with, with debt, it's kind of hard to travel, you know, unless you prioritize travel and, and live like a minimalist life. Also, flights can be expensive. So that's another reason some Americans may not travel certain places. But send them back to anti-black American, you know, hatred. I personally believe when you, we hear this from certain people, I think this is what they say to themselves. Cause jealousy is an evil thing. Jealousy is very evil. If someone is jealous of you, then they will take your life. You understand? They, they will take your life. Um, this person here says, you do own, like, I don't know what he mean by that, but you mean we don't or we do own institutions. Institutions are, are, are black Americans own a lot of institutions in this country. What are you talking about? We've created the institutions in this country. Matter of fact, the institution of the country of America, we built it. We, we laid the foundation. We built, when you look at the Capitol uh, in Washington, DC, that's the institution we built. Look at the White House. That's the institution that we built. We built the colleges. We built the roads. We built a lot of the bridges. There's a lot that we have built in this country. The wealth of, of, of the world that this country has had over everybody came through the building that we have had here. And it's so bad 
do you realize that let's go back to what we talked about earlier. When we remove ourselves from people, people get nervous. That's something I've been paying attention to. Have y'all noticed that people get real nervous when we say, okay, fine. We're going to go over here. Nobody cares if someone else in a diaspora come over here. Okay, so we went down here. I don't know why we went down. I, I had lost, it wasn't YouTube. I had lost uh, my internet connection. I don't know why, you know, what happened. Um, I, but I have like two Wi-Fi's that I can use here. So I switched to my other Wi-Fi. So where, where, where was I at? Where was I at? Cause, cause uh, I, now I got kind of lost. Yeah, no, it was the internet. It was the internet, you know, technical difficulty. Where, where was I at? I got, I'm, I'm lost now. So that happened. Um, you say, you said I'm buffering. You sure, you sure it's not your stuff because I'm, I'm looking at it on the internet. It looked like I'm, I'm pretty good. I mean, I got kicked out of everything. Actually, I got kicked off the app. I got kicked off everything because, uh, my internet went down. You know, you depend on the internet when you're streaming. So, okay. All right. So no, nobody's censoring anything. My internet went down. It had nothing to do with YouTube. My internet went down. Um, <laughs> nah, no, nah, it, it's actually uh freaking, uh, I had to switch to my other, my Xfinity. But anyway, when we, when we separate ourselves, everybody get nervous, right? Everybody get nervous. They worry what they doing. Why are they doing it? Where are they going? Who, who's over there leading them? All of a sudden we got to have a leader. Uh, what are they talking about? Oh, we got to go over there. We got to go see what they're doing. If we're too quiet, we don't say anything at that point, then... Okay. I'll just check in. I have to check myself. So if we, if we stay quiet, then everybody's like, why are they quiet? Why are they not saying anything? Remember, I always talk about Michael Rappaport. Hey, the black community not saying anything. Why are they quiet? Juliana Margulies. Hey, the black community is silent. You got Palestinian protesters come around us. Hey, black community. Hey, why are y'all guys not speaking up enough about our situation? Why are you guys are quiet? You notice that? Anybody have something happening to them? You even got the folks. Let's talk about the folks. You even got the folks like, hey, black people, you know, the economy and, 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 and it's hard to live and we're losing jobs and all of this and you guys were right and when we really need y'all to help, you know, like help get Biden out of office and you know, all, all of this stuff, you know what I'm saying? And like, what, why are you coming to us for why everybody come to us with a problem? Why? Like we just trying to mind our own black American business, but since nobody like, like everybody